500 years after English King Henry VIII's Tudor Navy warship, the Mary Rose, sunk while fighting off an invading French fleet, the ship was discovered in the English Channel in the 1970s, then removed from the water in 1982. It has since been on display in the Mary Rose Museum. Well, now, 40 years after the ship was recovered, a study on the human skeletal remains found in the wreckage is bringing you insight into changes in bone chemistry that could benefit today's medical research. Dr. Shiona Shanklin is the lead researcher on the project. Dr. Shanklin, I'm so excited to talk to you. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. You're, good morning. You're the lead researcher on this project. Talk to us first about the uh, historic significance of this study. So these remains are really important because not only is the preservation amazing, but it's very unique in our, an archaeological sense because we rarely know exactly the date in which we um, recover remains from archaeological sites. So the fact that we have a precise time that we know these remains came from is amazing. And in addition to that, the preservation of these remains is much greater and much better than we would usually find in an archaeological setting, allowing us to do experimentation now um, that allows us to influence and inform modern science. And I'm told your team used lasers to examine the skeletal remains discovered. Can you explain that procedure to me and what have you learned? So the laser in question is a light-based technique called Raman spectroscopy and it's used to obtain information on the chemistry of the sample. So light is made up of lots of different colours and one of the best examples of being able to see this is when sunlight interacts with water particles in the air and produces a rainbow. And each of these colours um, represents a different wavelength of light. And in this technique, what we do in Raman spectroscopy is we have a single colour or wavelength of this light and it's directed at a sample. And some of this light will interact with the molecules of a sample. So in this case, it's the collarbones. And molecules are basically tiny teams of atoms that make up everything around us. And the interaction between the light and the molecules causes a slight colour change. And this shift in colour um, allows us to see what exactly the um, bones are made up of because each of these colour shifts are really unique depending on the molecules. So it allows us to see exactly what a sample is made of at a chemical level. This is so fascinating. So your findings suggest that you were able to tell the sailors and what they did on the ship. How? How were you able to determine that? So a big part of it is based on where the skeletal remains were found on board the ship, which is done by the teams at the Mary Rose Museum and um, within the Mary Rose Trust. So based on where each of the individuals were located on the ship and the, um, the findings of what they found around them um, allows them to kind of estimate exactly what their role would have been on the ship. But in addition to that, because the collarbones that we were using in this study um, are based on either side of the body, it allowed us to investigate handedness as well um, as the changes of aging, which we were also looking at. Dr. Shanklin, let's take a step back because like I mentioned, this is so interesting, especially all these years later, the ship is found, human remains are found and they're well preserved. How is that possible considering they were underwater for so long? And how does the museum continue to preserve these skeletal remains? So the reason they're so well preserved is thanks to the nature of the environment in which they were found. So when the ship sank, the nature of the sediment on the seafloor um, where the ship sank has formed a kind of putty over the wreckage of the ship and that created an anaerobic environment, so an environment free from oxygen. And because of that, it's preserved um, many artefacts as well as the skeletons, which allows us to understand more about their lives. I think this is so cool. I want to ask, what's the next step for your team? What more do you hope to learn from what you've discovered on this warship? So one of the things that um, I'm looking at as well is the bones that make up the spine at the bottom of the spine. So I've got some research coming out about that soon. Um, but another thing I'm really interested in is looking at the changes that would occur in the spine from the archers. So in medieval England, archers on board this warship would have been using longbows, which are really, really big um, bows. And they require an awful lot of rotation, so a lot of turning of the spine. And that will have, therefore, um, asymmetric 
Um, Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.